Zombie Studios, the developers behind Blacklight Tango Down, Blacklight Retribution, and America's Army Special Forces, has decided to try its hand at the survival horror genre. And we thank them for that, especially since the survival horror genre has been almost entirely abandoned by most major developers. Daylight is a first-person, single-player horror experience written by Jessica Chobot, who is best known for her hosting roles over at IGN. Gamers play as Sarah, who wakes up in an abandoned hospital with a cell phone in one hand and a mysterious male voice in her ear. You wander the hallways and find clues throughout the environment that unravel the mystery of your surroundings and the evils that haunt and hunt you. Daylight is procedurally generated, so each player is guaranteed to have a semi-unique experience. The map will never be laid out the same way twice, so looking up walkthroughs for the game is almost unnecessary. However, every player will have the same goals and objectives. You find remnants of the hospital's past in the form of pictures, notes, and files that fill in the exposition. The more notes the players find, the greater the danger the player is in, and ghosts will torment the player with more frequency and ferocity. Once six remnants are found, a sigil is unlocked in the form of a creepy doll or a bible or a syringe as a key to the next area. Wash and repeat until the game is over. There are a few environmental puzzles along the way, but none that require any real thought, and most won't hold players back for more than a few seconds. They boil down to turn this valve here or push this box forward two feet to climb on top and proceed. The player's only light source is a cell phone, which doubles as a minimap. As you explore the environment, the map automatically updates on your phone, which is an amazingly cool app. To help find hidden items in the environment, players can pop glow sticks, which highlight usable items. So many surprises, Sarah. While there are no weapons per se, players can defend themselves from the supernatural with flares. Glow sticks appear in abundance, but flares less so. Without flares, the only way to escape from your pursuers is to run, and running will make looking at the minimap nearly impossible, which will also get you lost within the maze. The lighting effects from the phone, glow sticks, and flares are all pretty impressive and show some real promise for the future of the Unreal 4 engine. But is the game scary? Yes. Definitely. The game holds a steady tension throughout its 90-minute playthrough. The enemies in the environment will make the hair on your legs stand up, and you're guaranteed to squeal more than a few times in fear, especially if you play alone and in the dark. But sadly, the story doesn't add to the fear factor. Most of the scares come from feelings of isolation, being lost, the environment, and of course, the enemies who will get in your face. The game ends rather abruptly without delivering any feeling of real resolution. Though the words beta may appear on the top of the screen during this video review, the developers have assured us that this version of the game is review ready. We didn't run into any technical hangups while testing the game on the PC. The mechanical inspirational roots from Slender are apparent, but environmentally and story-wise, the game doesn't live up to Silent Hill 2 or Amnesia The Dark Descent. That doesn't mean it's a bad game. For $15, you'll get a few good scares, which is more than we could ever say about the current state of the horror film industry. It's not a bad deal at all if you happen to catch it on discount. The hud design and the visuals are pretty impressive and definitely deliver an immersive experience. We just felt like it was a little light on substance. The potential for something truly great is here if the experience was expanded upon. But again, it scared us, and sometimes that's all you really need from a horror video game. Thank <laughs> you.